Forest Outdoors here, uh, coming at you guys with a tournament update uh, from this past weekend at Lake of the Ozarks. Um, really great turnout, uh, really great outcome on the tournament. As you guys probably know, we got first place in the tournament, uh, both a Saturday and Sunday, two-day. Um, we battled through changing conditions, changing weather patterns, um, different forecasts, uh, and overall the weights were, were pretty difficult, as you see probably from other updates uh, with other tournaments. Uh, so starting off, let's go through practice. On Thursday and Friday, uh, we're able to get down there late afternoon uh, Thursday and do some pre-fishing. Uh, we had some pretty good weather patterns, pretty consistent, a little bit overcast, a little sunny. Uh, water temperatures that we found were anywhere between 55 to about 62 degrees, depending on where you went on the lake. And uh, really, Thursday was probably our big fish day. Uh, I caught uh, the father caught a five-pound spot, uh, which you can see on my Facebook page that thing is just has a massive belly on it uh, hooked into a couple uh, four or five pound fish that uh, we shook off uh, just for practice reasons uh, Friday is when we started experiencing a little bit of toughness and that seemed to carry on over the weekend uh, Thursday and Friday was a jig bite and that's what we would catch them on consistently wouldn't get a lot of numbers but we would see some bigger fish what I would be throwing in those conditions on Friday we had probably about 60, 61 degree water. Uh, we had a little bit of overcast skies, pretty, pretty dirty water. Um, we went into some river areas and we weren't afraid to fish the muddy water. Because of that, we used a black and blue jig, uh, really confident in this jig, especially in off-colored water. This jig in particular is a Jack Bates 5 16 ounce jig. Uh, it is a finesse jig and it is very compact. We have a Zoom Critter Crawl trailer on it, uh, shortened up the length of it, and made sure that it was a very compact, very tight bait. Get it in and around cover, backsides of docks, skip it underneath docks, and get it into brush piles really, really well. What I had this paired up with is a 7.3 to 1 Arden Apex Pro. This is a new reel that Arden came out with um, just this year, and it has been holding up outstanding for me. I love this reel. Um, it, Given that high gear ratio, I'm able to pick up that line very quickly uh, as soon as I hook into a fish underneath the dock or whatever it may be. Um, it's got some durability to it, and once again, with Ardent, these things cast a mile. It's unbelievable how far these things you can get them to cast. The rod, once again, is an, our new Ardent Edge that Ardent just came out with. This one in particular is a 7.6 medium heavy. It's got that nice parabolic bend, a soft tip to it, and enough backbone so I can set the hook really allows me to skip and flip underneath docks, get back in those areas that can be pretty difficult. Uh, the line I had this paired on with, with is a Bass Pro XPS 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is key here, uh, especially once you get up to the 17 pounds, especially for what I was doing. Skipping underneath those docks, uh, getting into those brush piles, you get a lot of abrasion with that line. This has been holding up extremely well for me. Very impressed. Now, Getting into Saturday and Sunday is when conditions changed, and here's what happened. Uh, the forecast for, for this weekend was expected to be thunderstorms all weekend long, and because of that, uh, the, the Missouri Conservation and the engineer um, for, the, for the lake, especially through Truman, they decided to start pulling water in preparation for the upcoming rain. Well, that didn't happen until Sunday. So, a cold front comes through Friday, dropping water as well as bright blue sunny skies on Saturday made for some extremely tough fishing conditions. Saturday we were only able to weigh in three fish and those totaled about uh, eight and a half pounds. Uh, we pretty much fished the pattern that we discovered Thursday and Friday. We were hitting secondary points, some primary points, and working our way backs into coves, uh, looking for some chunk rock and some pea gravel. Uh, well, once again, Saturday uh, a couple of our fish came on that black and blue jig, uh, did start getting some numbers on some crankbaits, and I'll get that into more a little bit here. Uh, but the crankbait bite started to pick up. However, with the challenge of fishing is you get sucked into one pattern, and especially with me as I'm learning, uh, you, you don't think outside the box and try to change something up when you think you're onto something. And when I say that is, I start throwing a crankbait Saturday. I start getting some pretty good bites. The challenge was, most of the time, those fish would either uh, swipe at it and get the back tail hooked on it, or they would be barely hooked, come up, jump, get close to the boat, and fall off. I kept throwing that crankbait thinking it's going to pick up you know, eventually over time. However, after talking to a few friends and talking to locals in the area, they suggested throwing a spinnerbait. 
high bluebird sky, some good wind, you really throw in that spinnerbait and, and get more of that attraction to it, that thump. And probably Saturday, I should have thrown it. Uh, but because I'm stubborn, I did it. Now, Sunday, there's really the same. We went into Sunday with the same concept, same idea, uh, you know, as Saturday. Saturday, we finished the day in third place. First place was 11 pounds. We weren't the very far off the lead. So Saturday, we said, you know what, or Sunday, let's go ahead and run the same pattern. Uh, this time, our first pattern was off the main length point. And instead of going straight to the point, we came back 50 yards and worked our way up to it. Well, first thing I threw in the morning was a crankbait because that's what I caught my one on the other day. So I kept, you know, trying that pattern. Well, that first 50 yards, I had, you know, we fished an hour and I had four fish in the boat, uh, all keepers. And from then on, you know, the pattern stayed consistent throughout the day and we just tore them up. Um, uh, conditions for Sunday changed a little bit. Uh, we did have a little bit of a warm front come through. Uh, overnight temperatures were in the low 50s to, or no, high 50s to low 60s. Uh, woke up in the morning, probably about 60 degree weather. Water temperature remained the same, water color remained the same. The only thing to different, uh, to denote is that the overcast skies remained all day. Uh, Saturday when we started fishing the crankbait bite and the jig bite, it was overcast for about 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Bite died off at about 11, 10 o'clock. Sunday, overcast all day long. We didn't get to our first spot until 7, 7.30. Uh, and fortunately, unfortunately for a Sunday tournament, we had to weigh in at 12. So we had a really short day Sunday. But the first spot we pulled up to, start cranking and four keepers right off the bat, which immediately gave me a new idea for a new pattern. Any areas with channel swings, chunk rock, um, onto primary points is where we would just annihilate these fish. When I say annihilate, I probably caught 25 fish um, within that short three to four hour window on Sunday. Um, and what we were doing is is really kind of uh, copying off Randy Howell uh, in, the, in the 2014 Bassmaster Classic. Now, some gear is a little different, but um, for this setup, what I was using is a 6.5 to 1. Ardent Apex Elite, uh, once again a new reel that Ardent came out with. I like that that medium action or the, that medium uh, area for that reel. It uh, really allows me kind of to, to accommodate my speed, not go too fast, not go too slow. Sometimes I'd actually pick up a 5.3 to 1 if I really wanted to slow it down. I had this paired with a Ardent Edge rod and I'd either go with a 6 foot 6 medium or a 7 foot medium. It really didn't matter to me. Uh, it's just the extra rods that I had in my boat that I had these things paired up with. The line was very important here. Um, I would be ticking a lot of docks, not docks, but rocks, trees, stumps, um, anything that I can get this crankbait to bounce off of. And abrasion resistant line was very important here. For this instant, I, this is, I was using either a 14 to 12 pound Yozuri monofilament. Um, I'd retie probably about every hour uh, or every time I caught a fish. And you know this thing held up throughout the day. I had zero breakoffs. I had uh, zero issues with this line, and I've been absolutely amazed with this monofilament that I've been using this year. Now, more importantly, the lure, the lure that I was actually using throughout the day, um, I, I, I um, lost at one point, and don't ask me how I lost it because it's a long story. But um, I've got an order with um, Livingston to get some more in, uh, but it's the Randy Howler. Howler uh, classic lure. Uh, I'm, as soon as I lost that, um, I went into the tackle box and I had some um, Rappel DT6 and I would go back and forth between these two colors and in fact at the end of the day uh, my father, my, my partner, um, actually picked up the other rod and we start cranking in tandem. And what we were throwing is a Rappel DT6 in a almost a, a craw or a rust color um, and if it was if I wasn't throwing that I'd be throwing another DT6 Rapala in a what they call a penguin color and this is more of a black gray back uh, white sides and a little bit of chartreuse on the belly this is what I was throwing back and forth all day long my father or my, excuse me, my fishing partner tried throwing a jig tried throwing everything in the tackle box and they wouldn't bite it uh, the, the, how we were fishing these crankbaits is we'd get up on these primary points, uh, these bluff walls, and we would parallel crank. And I'll do a video on this in a little bit, but we would put our boat about three to four feet off the bank and just cast down parallel and cranking that lure 
all the way back. Really kind of a slow tick, making sure we're hitting structure, we're hitting the pea gravel, we're hitting the rock, and ticking it off that bottom. And these fish would see this thing come by and it's a pure reaction strike. Um, there would be times in the day where fish would be hitting the front hook in one color, the back hook in that same color, and switch it up throughout the day, and the same thing were to happen. Never even thought about throwing a spinnerbait, didn't want to because this bite was so on. Um, and really, really happy with how it turned out in throwing it. The only thing that I would have changed with this tournament is if we had more time, I would have gone for a big bite. And when I say a big bite, it's once again how Randy Howell did it two years ago when he went to a deeper running crankbait. These crankbaits can run anywhere between six to eight feet deep. I would have changed it over to an eight to 10 foot uh, running crankbait to get it in that deeper water and hopefully get a bigger bite. The way we ended Sunday, uh, we had almost 20 pounds uh, of fish on Sunday, and we had a total weight of about 28 pounds to win the tournament. Uh, we were very happy with this outcome, especially with other tournaments going in that we heard were taking you know, 15, 16 pounds to win a tournament. So in fact, we were onto something really special here, and we're really excited uh, that we were able to figure out this pattern, especially at Lake of the Ozarks. Um, Big Bass Bash is coming up next weekend, and this lake is about to be on fire. Uh, you've got water temperatures around the lake between 58 and 61 degrees. You got a full moon coming. You've got rain. Water's gonna, you know, come up on the lake. The Big Bass Bash is gonna, is gonna have some huge fish coming in next weekend. I'm excited to see the scales. Um, really, that's all I have for this tournament update. Uh, I've got a few videos that I'm working on now. If you guys have some suggestions, ideas on what you want to do, please send me a message on Facebook, visit my YouTube page, or visit my, my personal or my, my Forest Outdoors webpage at forestoutdoors.com. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate everything that my sponsors and my friends are really helping me out with, uh, whether it be um, messages on Facebook, you know, emails, whatever it may be. It's really appreciative. And I'm really enjoying this. So thank you very much. Specifically, my sponsors, uh, Ardent, uh, Livingston Lures, uh, Yozuri Line. Um, it, the list goes on and on. But without these guys, it's really making it for an enjoyable season and really helping me out, um, experience items on the water, test out new lures, uh, create value for them that, that I'm truly seeing day in and day out by using their product. So... Uh, thanks once again uh, for any updates, for any questions, please visit my, my Facebook page, my YouTube page, or forestoutdoors.com. Thank you very much and hope to see you out in the water soon.